Hello everyone, it's time for another episode of Sam Arcade. But before we get started, I want you to take a moment to thank all of our amazing subscribers. Your support and encouragement mean the world to me. And I couldn't do it without you. Now if you are new here and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? By subscribing you will be joining our amazing community of Linux enthusiasts and you will never miss out on my latest videos. Today we are going to take a look at Arch ISO, the official tool for creating Arch Linux ISO images. So what is Arch ISO you may ask? Well it's a tool that allows you to create a custom Arch Linux ISO images that includes specific software, drivers or configurations you need. First you will need to install the Arch ISO package from the Arch Linux repositories. Open your terminal, just type sudo pacman-s Arch ISO and you are done. Now we can start creating our custom Arch ISO images. Let's take a look at how Arch ISO works. First, we need to create a folder. You can name it something you like. I am creating my folder on my desktop. You can create it anywhere you want. But remember the place. Now copy ArchISO from the user share ArchISO slash config slash relang and paste it into the folder that we created earlier. You can create a baseline version of ArchISO if you want a minimalistic version of ArchISO. But if you want non-free drivers and desktop environment, then you should go with Relang version. Clean.sh is for housekeeping. If somehow while building an Arch ISO you get an error, you can fix that error and then rebuild the Arch ISO. You will have to remove the work and out folders from the directory. This script will do this work for you. Now we just need to copy some files such as grub config file for the bootloader and network manager dot service for the network manager so that when we boot we can connect with the internet. Display manager dot service is required for the desktop environment to load properly. It's time to edit some files to make customization in our ISO. In the profile dev.sh file, we are now giving permission to some files and folders. Just remember the name of these files and folders 
because later we will edit them. The packages file is self-explanatory. In this file, we will add some additional packages to our ArchISO. In this case, Plasma as a desktop environment, XOR as a display server, SDDM as a display manager. If you want any information, just search the package name with the Arch wiki in the end. Remember, just replace the name of the Arch user with the name that you would like to see as a live username. If you don't want to replace it, then just leave it as it is and follow the tutorial. To add a new user, just add them to passwd. And to store their password, you need to add them to the shadow file. In this video, we will create a live user environment where we don't need a password to login. We will add user with password in another tutorial. It's time to create some files and folders from scratch. Do you remember the name of the files and folder that we added in the profile dev.sh file? Now we need to create the sudoers.d folder which contains the g underscore wheel file. This file will edit the wheel group in the sudoers file. polkit dash one slash rules dot d slash forty nine dash no pass wd underscore global dot rules will bypass the root password login prompt.
sddm.com.d slash kde underscore settings.com will start the plasma session. Do not forget to rename the arch user if you like to change it. sddm.com will start the sddm for the display server in our case it is xorg aka x11 G Shadow contains the shadowed information for the group accounts. In our case, it is Wheel Group. Group file contains the optional user parameters.
Now it's time to build the Arch ISO. Finally, our Arch ISO is ready to boot. Now let's boot our custom Arch ISO. As you can see, our Arch ISO is working properly. Let's test some packages that we added to our ISO. Let's neofetch and see our system configuration. And we have root privileges available for our Arch user. The network is working properly. We can actually use this ISO to install Arch at a much faster speed. And that's it for today's video of Sam Arcade. I hope you learned something new about Arch ISO and how it can be used to create custom Arch Linux ISO images. If you have any question or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.